Hey programmers, this is Eric, and in this video we're going to take a look at Aurelia and binding. So this is the next video in our Aurelia series, where we are creating a web application. So to begin with, you can see here, if you go to the Aurelia.io hub and you look at binding, they have some great documentation. So we're going to take a look at one-way and two-way binding. So let's bring up our app. And I already have Tmux running. And let me see if I can bring up the web page. Okay, here it is. And this is where we left off last time. And what we can do is we can take a look at our project here. And we'll go ahead and take a look at our resources. Now we're going to use this at bindable. And at bindable can only be added to attributes and custom elements. We can use something called observers for our normal view and view models that you see here in the root. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at one of ours. And let's look at header.html. And then we have this header.js file. But if we go back, and if you remember from the previous videos, we imported that in through here. And we imported in via this require statement, but we did it through header.html. And when we do it through header.html, all you get is the HTML. It's kind of like a partial in other frameworks. So we actually, it's not using the class file in the header.js. So what we can do is we can delete the .html and we can save it. But if we save that, you can notice now you never, you no longer see that hello world there. So what we can do is what we can do is, is we can go back into our header.js file and we can add this bindable value. So we already are importing in bindable, so we can import bindable and then we'll add message. If we save that and reload, so now we see my new website. So now it's passing it back in. So because if you remember from the HTML, we're creating this header and we're binding the message, the message that bind message, and we're passing it in to the custom element, and it's getting that message. Uh, let's end it anyways. It's getting it from here. This this uh, this dot message right here, my new website. So now, since now we're using both the class file and the header.html, let's take a look at what it would be if we wanted to add something else. So let's go into the header. And we're going to create a new bindable message. And we're going to just leave the default value in there for now. And we'll just call it some variable name. You want to be more descriptive here. But just for the purposes of this, we're going to call it ET. And we're going to call it uh, test message. And now we want this, this uh, property with inside this class file to be inside our header, our custom element. So to do that, we can go back here and just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to add a input type equals text and value. And then we're going to leave it for this day. We're going to do it a one way and we're going to bind it to the message. Well, before we do that, let's just do if we do value equals and we just put a message here. See what happens there. All right. Oops. So you can see here now we have my new website. That message is appearing in this text box. Uh, it's not affecting the other messages, but you can see it's definitely in there. So let's lo look at now. So what we should do is when we bind values, you do value, and then you do either one way, two way, or bind. So let's start with one way. We'll do uh, one way, and then we don't have to put it in the curly brackets anymore. We just type in the name of the property. So we'll type in message here. We'll save it. And it basically essentially did the same thing. It's one way bound, meaning that it's getting the information from the class, but it's not affecting anything else. So let's try the other way. Let's try two-way. 
and we'll save it. And now you can see it's affecting the other, it's actually uh, affecting everything on the website. So it's two way bound. So as we change this, it's changing it on the class file as well. We can kind of illustrate that too. We can create something called a trigger and it, we can create a class in our class file and have it be affected by this. So let me demonstrate. So we have a two way. So I'm gonna add a new button and I'm gonna use something called click.trigger. And that what that's gonna do is as soon as you click the button, it's gonna trigger this, this method here called trig. So if we go back to the header.js, we can add a new method. We'll call it trig. And we'll just do an alert box and we'll do this dot message. So we'll save it. Everything gets reloaded. So now you can say my new website. So, but if I change it and hit press me, you can see it, it's actually changing the message in the class. So now it says my new website ASDF. Now, if we go back to the custom element and we change it back to one way, that means it's grabbing the information from the, the class file, but it's not changing it. You can see if you, if you click it, it says my new website. If you make changes to it, it still says my new website there. So that's it. Now, the last one you want to know is bind. Now, when you do bind, it's actually defaults to two way. So if I do bind here and I make changes, it's be defaulted to two-way, and you can see in both here and here, it's changed both places. So that's pretty much it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, this is just one quick, small little tidbit. I'll create a follow-up video, some more binding. But if you have any questions, leave a comment, and please uh, like up, uh, press the like button if you like this video. Thanks.